Oh, it's 10 has, years recent. Wow. Well, seems like a long time. In movies, it tends very to be recent. pretty recent. When you get as old as JJ. Oh, like, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. No. <laughs> Welcome to the What's Our Verdict Podcast, where we fashion ourselves cinematic judge and jury. My name is JJ Carter. I'm here with my co-hosts, Matt Sennheiner. Better red than dead. And Alec Burgess. Let's get it. We appreciate your help going to the podcast. Go ahead and hit that follow or subscribe button. Tell a friend about us. Go check out our website, whatsourverdict.com, where you can listen to all of our episodes. You can sign up for our newsletter, where we send out exclusive content and updates. You can pick up some sweet merch and interact with us as well. The question we always ask is if you ever find yourself wondering if you should spend the time, money, or both on a movie. To help with that question, each week we put a movie on trial, discuss the facts, pass judgment, and let you know our verdict. Today we're reviewing The Bad Guys. It was released April 22nd, 2022. It was written by Eaton Cohen. It was directed by Pierre Parafel. It stars Sam Rockwell, Mark Marin, Aquafina, Craig Robinson, Anthony Ramos, Richard Ayoade, Alex Borstein, and Zazie Beetz. Several misunderstood criminal animals attempt to become good with some disastrous results along the way. If you haven't seen this movie and you want to avoid spoilers, now's the time to pause the podcast. Go check out our YouTube spoiler-free review. You can see if you should watch this movie or go watch the movie and then come back, pick up where you left off because we're going to spoil the shit out of this thing. So let's dive in and talk about the bad guys. Um, Let's do it. Let's uh, get the first topic out of the way, and that is Sam Rockwell. Holy smokes. Yeah. I love Sam Rockwell. I think I was like first introduced to him in like Jojo Rabbit. Wasn't he like one of the Nazis? He was. He was one of the commanders. He was one of the gay commanders. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, that's that guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's got his big old costume on. So ever since I watched that, like I've started looking for stuff that has Sam Rockwell in it mm-hmm. um, because he's phenomenal. And I think he kind of flies under the radar a little bit for the talent that he provides. He's worth more than what he in or what he's portrayed He's, he's like full of talent, but doesn't get necessarily all the recognition that he should. So I'm here to recognize Sam Rockwell. Yeah. And he's been in a lot of movies and TV shows. Like he's done a lot of work that he doesn't really, like you don't know about until yeah. later. Like, I mean, he's in some big movies. Like he was in the green mile back in the day. He was in a movie called safe men, which was, a really weird and interesting movie. Really weird and interesting movie with Sam, with Steve Zahn because he did a lot of comedy early on in his career. I think he gets overlooked a lot. And I think now, like, I'm pretty sure he won an Oscar at some point. Or he's been at least... He, really, he better have won an Oscar. Uh, yeah, at least he's been nominated for a couple. Because he, he, he started getting some recognition, especially recently, like in the last probably 10 years. Like, he did... Oh, it's 10 years recent. Well, seems like a long time. In movies, it takes very to be recent. pretty recent. When you get as old as JJ. Oh, like, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you very much. No. <laughs> no, he did this movie in 2017 called The Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, which was a really weird movie, but it's really good. And he just killed it. And then he did a movie recently. Well, he did Jojo Rabbit, which he was great in. He was George Bush in Vice. And he fucking killed it as George Bush. It was disturbing watching him as George Bush, actually. So he's done a lot of cool stuff. I love Sam Rockwell, always have. So it was good to see. But yeah, his voice work, it was uh, pretty epic. Pretty yeah. Epic. yeah. But there was a lot of good cast in this movie. So to grow from that, like, I didn't realize, for some reason, I thought the the governor or whatever was... Oh, I thought she was somebody different. So when I read that she was Zazie Beats, I was like, okay, that's interesting. I, got I, Aquafina. Aquafina, which who didn't annoy me in this movie. She annoys yeah, me. Right? Off yeah, I was so worried about it. Yeah, she. I actually quite enjoyed her as the little tarantula. She was quite <laughs> funny. Yeah, and then the shark, Craig Robinson, that guy. I didn't even know it was Craig Robinson, to be honest with you. But now that I heard it, when I saw it was Craig Robinson, I was like, oh, shit, okay. That was him. But I, the shark cracked me up. The one oh, I don't yeah. know is Mark Marin, like the guy that played Snake. I guess he does he a lot of voice work, but huh? Is he related to Teach? No, this guy is white as white gets. So no. <laughs> but yeah, it was and Richard Ayoade. I hate saying his name because I screwed up. Professor Marmalade, the the weirdo. There was a lot of good. Yeah, he's like, a classic voice actor. Yeah, yeah. 
the main voicing of this was I, it was really good. I can't yeah. complain about any of the actors and how they played these characters. Yeah, whoever did the casting on the voice, they they did that well. Like everybody jived. It felt natural. It really just felt smooth. Like the people were well positioned for the like the piranha guy, whoever that was. The oh, yeah. energy from that, like man, it was you, you could feel it off the screen. Yeah. That was Anthony Ramos. So he's the, he got famous for the play Hamilton. And then he was in, he was in the, in the Heights movie that we reviewed a while back. Oh, that guy. guy. Yeah. Okay. So that's why he was able to do that like song where he, they sang like he was the lead sing in that party. Yeah. So, cause he's a big singer. He's a big uh, stage yeah, actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed this core group of people. Like even the freaking the sheriff or like the chief of police, like she <laughs> cracked me up. Like even like most of the time, those silly oh, she characters, was awesome. I don't really enjoy, but that I enjoyed the hell out of that character in this movie. Like made me laugh so they, hard. They gelled well enough for like, this is one where I like the characters enough that I'd go see this again, but I like the sheriff so much. I'd, I'm worried. I'm like, man, if they made another one, I'd want to see her in it. Cause she was so over the top, especially the part where she ultimately started dancing. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> or in the before, before part when she like slammed her fist down in the briefcase with the, the snake oh. in it. And like, man, her like zero to 100 mentality was just awesome. Oh, yeah. She should give driving lessons to Vin Diesel. Yeah. And I'm, I'm assuming Fast like, Jay, you could probably. Chief of police edition. Yeah. Jay, you could probably speak to this more too, because you listen to a lot of critical role and those are all voice actors and they probably talk about this a lot. Like voice acting is hard like to, we just think it's oh you're just using a voice but to get that excited that into it that believable from just a voice i don't know, just talk to our audience about that a little bit because I, I know you you listen to people that do that quite often and i think a lot of it depends there's a lot of different styles of voice acting so like anime for example especially when it comes from japan or uh, korea and they ship it over and they dub over it so dubbing is the hardest type from what i've heard from these guys and that is because mouth movements are there and they're given a line, the translated line, and they have to wait for a timer so that they can read their line and they dub it over the active playing video. So they have to time it just right. So that's gnarly. But most voice acting, I think from most actors find it difficult because they do it by themselves. It's not like they're standing around in a room together and acting against each other. Like just they reading do. their own line. Yeah. They're just in a booth reading their own line. And especially something like this, where a lot of the voice acting for this movie and most of the movies that have come out in the last like year and a half were done in a vacuum because of COVID. So not mm -hmm. only were they in a booth, but the most of them were in a homemade booth. So they did a lot of these at home. They had to have a booth in their house. They would dub the audio. They would get their script. They'd read it. Then they'd send over files of their video, their audio. And then the director would call and say, hey, here's some, you know, do it this way, do it that way to make some changes for them. But it's not an easy thing because it's not like normal acting where you're all together and you're playing against each other in a scene. It's you're given a script and you're given some, of the, the video to see what's happening. So you get like those pared down versions of the drawings and the artists renditions, but, and then like the animations are like the stick animations and shit that they do. That's pre built, but yeah, it's, it's not an easy thing to do voice acting. In fact, I would say in a lot of ways, it's more difficult than regular acting because of the, the situation and where you're at and probably more so recently because of COVID they're not able mm. to go into like a studio booth with people. I think they're back they to get it now. Paid significantly less. I would assume. No, it's typically you're going to get the same because it's your really? name. Yeah. Because it's your name that draws people. So for, like, but, uh, I guess if you were coming up through voice acting, like you were a voice actor, not like Tom Cruise going to sure. voice a character type thing. Right. Yeah. If you're like a professional voice actor, you're not making the 25, $35 million a, a movie like you, a video or film actor does, but they make decent money. Like I, I'm not saying they're making millions of years, but especially video game, if you get into that's a whole different anim animal, just animation cartoons and things versus video game. When you start getting into those video games, because it's such a big market, they make some good money in the voiceover for video games. Yeah. Especially now because yeah. they do with the motion capture more than just voice. A lot of times you're actually having to act out in the, the ping pong suit 
and acting, which I oh, can't. Oh, is that how they do things these days? Yeah. You should watch some. It's interesting. You should watch some, like, a lot of the video games now do, like, behind the scenes where they'll show, like, Last of Us, and I talk about it because my obsession with those games, but, like, The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2, you can watch behind the scenes, and they're all decked out in their ping pong suits and their mm. fake toy guns and everything's painted green and blue and it's really fucking weird looking to watch them but well i know naughty dogs like they're they're one of the best with all that yeah yeah they kind of were one of the leads in doing the full-on bodysuit stuff so motion it's really interesting yeah hmm. but they yeah this movie they did great can we um, talk about the problem that I had? The one of the, the just points of confusion. It's one of the points I think I said in JJ. Why I just don't understand why they're animals and they're amongst humans. And there's a couple other key characters that are also animals, but everyone else is human. It just confused me because I've seen Zootopia, which I really liked the animated movie, and it was a whole animal culture. And to me this would have worked in that type of setting and made more sense, but I just don't, I don't get why they were animals. And then they're putting on disguises. The shark, I'm sorry, is not going to look like a female <laughs> being that large amongst humans. Are we that stupid? Or when, when the wolf's little mustache falls off and they're like, Oh my, and his glasses come off. Oh my gosh, that's the wolf. That's the bad guy. But it didn't make sense because they, they brought in the little, gerbil guy and then the super cool governor who is the fox but everyone else was a human i just didn't get that like why i think it's also because the source material this movie is based on a series of books and i don't know why they changed it i, I don't know and maybe and they're trying to avoid the likeness of whether it be actual people or races or groups of people i don't know because in the books, everyone is anthropomorphic. So in the books, they are all animals. In fact, looking at anthropomorphic, it. Anthropomorphic, JJ, what? That's that was animals so that look like humans. Yeah, animals that look like humans, anthropomorphic. Oh, why not just do, yeah, like, like okay. Yeah, in the or books, like they, they're all that way. Or they're insect-like aliens. And so the heart or butt shape, depending on, and we'll talk about that in a minute, <laughs> it, it's, it, there's insect-like aliens that come into it from that. But like even the announcer, like the news chick in the books is a cat versus a human. And then, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know why they did the whole humans versus make everybody. I think they probably wanted them to stand out as well. Like the key characters. And I, I get that. And it's a kid's movie. It's whatever. But it just felt odd because then we have these crazy hamsters that are wait they're just actually hamsters and they're being controlled mm -hmm. but then all the key characters in this movie are animals so why are these animals smart people like people and then we just have these hamsters yep i mean the other plot hole that kind of stuck out to me is there's only two water-based creatures in this movie or animal or characters. So there's the shark and the piranha. Why can they be on land? Yeah. That's a good point. But they their little hideout is off of the LA River, which <laughs> this movie was super <laughs> full. Um, so maybe that's how they get it. Yeah. yeah. That was weird too. I was like, why is there a shark? <laughs> and he can just walk around. Yeah. And I think I had that. I was like, hmm. Why is there only two? Like, I get it, like, if there were more, right? But there was only the shark and the piranha, and they could walk around on their fins and and whatnot. And so I was, it was, a, there was just some weird choices. And I'm hoping, obviously, there's probably going to be a bad guys too, because I'm pretty sure that this, the box office is doing pretty well with this movie. So hopefully they'll straighten out doing some definition in the world and, and things like that from the books. Because the, the other piece about it is, like I said, the, the main villain in the book. He's not a guinea pig. He's an alien. Spoiler alert. He's an alien. Jeez, now you dressed really as, for me. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, an, he's an alien dressed as a guinea pig person. Hey, Alex going to read himself to sleep tonight. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. gosh. Oh, no. So, uh, yeah, it's really, anyway, I don't, I don't know the choice behind that. I'd be interested to know why they maybe decided to do that. But the whole guinea pig thing bothered me too. Like, if we're going to talk about that, like, 
I get that they freed all these guinea pigs from the science lab or whatever, like the testing lab. So that's where most of those guinea pigs at the end came from. But why is it only guinea pigs that are affected by the moon rock or whatever the hell yeah, it they is? Didn't, and, they they glossed over that. Yeah, and I like him do is because he was a guinea pig. But then Snake was controlling him, and he was <laughs> well. He likes guinea pigs. They're <laughs> <juicy>. <laughs> that's fair. He so it, explain to me about the, the butt rock meter thing. When he when they come to the the gerbils compound, he initially claps on the meteor is it a lamp then but when they showed the the end of the heist at that point i thought it was a meteor and he already had it in his possession i was super confused or is it, he just had a lamp of it too it was a statue that was like an homage to himself yeah he, how cool he is yeah he had the lamp because that's what made him famous was figuring out that it looked like a heart right so he had the lamp, but I think what they were trying to show is this guy's been planning this for since the thing hit the ground, right? So mm-hmm. he has this lamp. It's an identical replica to the actual meteor so that when it came time, because he thought he swapped them to where the meteor was the one driving around on the truck or whatever versus or on the car versus the one that snake swapped it out for the lamp. But I think that was always his plan is he could have, he could give back the lamp and then keep the real one so he could mind control them. I just was like, what the fuck? It's just, somebody's going to notice when all the guinea pigs are running around. (laughs) And maybe not control the species that's you, like pick something else. Well, yeah, and it's weird because he's not actually him in the books. Like he's he's an alien, he's an insect alien. So I just didn't, I thought it would be more interesting because I thought at first when he put on the helmet that he was going to be able to mind control the humans. I thought that's where the difference was going to be, right? Was the animals couldn't be mind controlled by this thing, but the humans could. And then that it would turned out a lot of sense. Yeah, that would have made a lot more sense. And I don't know if that's where the book goes with it or not. I don't know, if maybe not. But I, to me, that was the first thing that I thought was, oh, he's going to be able to mind control the humans. And then all of a sudden, he's mind controlling fucking guinea pigs. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Why are there so many? <laughs> yeah, and then they turn point, into basically man. like a morph monster guinea pig river. And when they smash into things... They just keep going. Props to those guinea pigs, man. They are on some hyped up roids. Well, I just want to know where all the smashed guinea pigs from the car driving over it. And like, there's got to be like a pile of dead guinea pigs somewhere. Kids movie, man. Gloss over those details. I don't know. I did like this movie. This is completely differently random, but the the whole briefcase thing where they had a randomly generated code, and, and when the snake finally does get the code, and it's one, what? two, three, four. <laughs> but I love that he just rolled his eyes. <laughs> of course, he puts it back, and all that trouble just to get it. So pretty funny. Speaking of the twist, were you guys caught off guard at all? But I mean, I know it's a kids movie, so it's not like they have to try real hard to hide stuff. But like, did you see the whole? professor marmalade thing coming from a mile away like i did yeah okay the other twist of the governor being that other individual like when it i wasn't super surprised but i was i was also like okay like that one was a little bit more surprised but the other one no like i knew that guy was gonna be the bad guy yeah i think i was like a little surprised at how in depth like the whole crimson paw like how cool her villain character like side was but I knew she was going to be some sort of villain just the way that her and Wolf interacted at the first party. And like she. Well, yeah, I went back to that. I was like, she was too specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, she caught on too well and like was too in his corner for her not to have had some sort of, well, on Fox, you know, the first thing people say about Fox are they're Sly Fox or whatever, you know, so they're, they're on that villain no scale. Fox. Yeah. <laughs> they're on that villain scale somewhere on the low end, but. I will say that when she came in as the crimson paw, like that was badass shit. Like that was fun. And like her fight scene, that shit was dope. Yeah. Right. I love that their prison was a scum. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Super something ultra max. Yeah. That that made me chuckle. I was like, only, (laughs) only it wasn't scum. It was suck them. Oh, it was. Yeah. It was S U C M. 
Well, never mind. Then. Something C missed opportunity. Well, yeah, it was something ultra something max. But yeah, it was suck them. And I was like, well, that's an adult joke. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, they actually put that in there. Okay. <laughs> but I love it when cartoons have adult jokes in there. Oh, yeah. I think my favorite joke, even though it's not really an adult joke, was when they like went down the stairs. And then just in unison, they all put their seatbelts on after oh. they stopped. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> when they were driving all slow. And like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say that the, the car chase scene, and Mattson, you mentioned this in the spoiler free. The car chase scene was really well done for an animated film. That was awesome. I like to see that humans can run as fast as their vehicle and get back in their vehicle. I mean, it, I love that perfect quintessential animated movie but it worked so well. it was so captivating and interesting the, the facial expressions the dialogue just to the sheer about of like cars crashing and the ingenious nature showing the hacking of the traffic lights and everything i liked it a lot i would that was really fun really really fun scene yeah i like to like the theft of the rock like when they were at the party and like she grows her computer into this like giant like 19 screens and then like <laughs> passes out from the fart cast <laughs> just to like come back and finish it at the last second. That was a tense moment, man. Yeah, I know. You're like, oh. I had both hands on the armrest, like, oh shit, this is how it goes down. <laughs> They're all going to jail. Yeah, it was pretty fun. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. Like when they're in the diner. Mm, and mm-hmm, they're just mm-hmm. all nonchalant and then they just go rob a bank. Yeah. And everybody's like pressed up against the walls. Yeah. Each other. That was funny because they were all just like chilling. And then all of a sudden you see everybody hiding from them because they're snake uh, check, and the please. wolf. Yeah. Well, we're just going to leave the money here. <laughs> it, it reminded me of Pulp Fiction, like where the opening diner scene where the two are just sitting there and then they decide to rob the actual diner. So I, it kind of felt reminiscent of that, only they walk out and rob a bar so I, or a bank. So I thought that was pretty fun. Alec, you sent over a topic as far as, now I've never seen, seen Zootopia, so I have no point of, no frame of reference for it. But uh, You should watch it, JJ. I think you'd like it. I'll have to check it out. I've heard about it, but I've never seen it because it was out before we were doing this podcast, I think. So you put down, is it a, I don't, I don't know if it was a question or it was a statement, but. Oh, it's a statement. So you're the better version of Zootopia. Yeah, Talk to me about why. Better. All right. So Zootopia kind of deals with uh, prejudice <sighs> a little bit. There's this animal community and most of this community is what we would consider prey animals, right? Non-predator, non-hunter. And there's a small portion that are the predators. There's this cute, fuzzy little assistant mayor who ends up being the bad guy in the end, just like a cute little fuzzy gerbil. Mm. In Zootopia, the blame is put essentially on the predators uh, the same way it's put on the bad guys in here and they get framed for a crime. So I was watching this like, oh, this is Zootopia, except I like this movie better. I think it was far better done. Just the adult kind of jokes and humor made it more appealing to I think a wider range of people because you don't lose the kids. But the adults are, I think anyway, more entertained. So, uh, yeah, I, was See, like, oh. I, I tend to disagree with you there, Alec, where I think the bad guys was more at times entertaining with some of the overtop nature. And I liked the main crew a little bit more than maybe Zootopia, where I think the bad guys suffered is some of the confusion I've talked about earlier is this world building of the questionable nature of these animals amongst humans, but then also animals that are just animals, but not humans. And Zootopia never shied away from that. I like that they set up, they had this predators versus the, like the more the docile animals and they fit their mannerisms. And I like that. And I think they set that up really well. And they built a world that made sense to me and a community around that. And they did a really good job where the bad guys left that lacking for me, where I have questions around, well, if I'm going to watch another movie with them, they need to do some more explaining to me on like, where do these animals fit within society? Where's the told you set that up. But I will say the bad guys to me was more entertaining and the crew that took us there in the journey. I like that more, but Zootopia, the world they created sets better if, if they were to make a sequel where the bad guys like 
It just feels like we took animals, plopped them into humanity. We're going to do it with what we want. This is a kid's movie. We can get away with that. But if you're going to develop a series for me, like what I love about Toy Story is the, the character progression, the reason why the toys are alive and all these things make sense. They have kind of rules and criteria that they adhere to. The bad guys kind of broke that. And unless they're going to kind of give that back to me, that's going to bother me. That's fair. Um, I don't like disagree with their point at all about the world building. What I liked though, is that they kind of, in the bad guys, they were punching uphill from the very beginning. And we get that with snake where he's like, who wants to come to a snake's birthday party? This is why I hate my birthday. (laughs) Nobody ever showed up because I was a snake. So I took their world building from that angle. I was like, Oh yeah, these guys had the entire deck stacked against them before they even decided to become criminals. Yeah, yeah, I see both sides for sure because I it did bother me that I was like, what the hell? Why are there humans in this? Or what is there? What's the point of it? But I also, yeah, I was really, really enjoyed the whole plot of this movie. Like I just enjoyed it. It's just weird at that time. But I'll have to watch Zootopia because I have no frame of reference for the comparison because I've never. It's seen not a it. bad watch. I enjoy yeah. it. I just yeah, like this no. one better. I think it did a better job. Sure. Yeah, interesting, fun movie for sure. Last question. Was the meteor a heart or a butt? Dude, it was a butt. (laughs) No, it was a heart. It was too, had too much of a point at the bottom. It needed to be a little bit more rounded for me to feel like a butt. (laughs) It looks like it's all about perspective, right? The bad guys see a butt, the good guys see a heart. (laughs) So, and I see a heart-shaped butt. You saying I'm a bad guy? Is that what you're saying, JJ? Saying we're all bad guys. (laughs) (laughs) we just don't all know it yet but the heart design there's two ways to look at it there's one it looks like a woman bending over and the other is it's two actual human hearts set side to side it's up for debate whether it's the woman bending over which there are cases for and, and proof of and then it's also like i said they you take two actual human hearts and if you turn them to a certain angle and set them side by side, they actually kind of look like that. So it's the whole love heart. Which is more believable. <sighs> well, considering that <laughs> I, I don't know if I could go there. <laughs> I will stop. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there it is. We digress. <laughs> <laughs> right. Kids movie. Kids movie. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and rate this thing. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. Matson, let's let you start with this one. No, you started last time, huh? I'll go first. Oh, I can go first, JJ. I'm not shy. All right, you go first, buddy. Yeah, I'll give this movie a solid four. Really entertaining, fun, especially if you're going to see it with kids or even with some adults, you're going to laugh. There's definitely, and I wish I remembered my favorite one-liner. I can picture it in my head, but I cannot articulate it enough. There are definitely times that I was just, I was laughing and it's a feel good, do good movie. The twists and turns, I mean, they're fairly predictable, but again, it's fun. I could see myself absolutely watching this movie again. I do hope that there's a a sequel to this movie. I really like the set of characters, the progression, the depth that they brought to the table. I don't think there, I mean, it's an animated movie. I don't think there's a lot of more in-depth things to say. Like we talked about the voice acting solid. I did a really good job. I think you'll, you'll be entertained. So if you want to see this in theaters, go do it. Try to go see a matinee, save yourself some money. You don't need to see it on the big screen. If you want to wait till it streams, go for it. But I think you'll really like it. Definitely. Alec. All right. I'm uh, going to piggyback off of Matson and give it a four as well. I think probably my favorite part was after they, you know, kind of figured out that Wolf is trying to go good and they're talking about, so you stole the old lady's purse, right? And it's like, no, no, I just saved her. Then you stole the purse. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't steal the purse. But so what, why didn't you steal the purse? And that whole interaction where they can't comprehend that he would just help somebody to help them and then not rob them. That made me chuckle. And I really enjoyed that aspect. But yeah, there's lots of little interactions and everything like that that just made this a very enjoyable movie. I will see it again. I wouldn't mind going back to theaters to watch it again because I had such an enjoyable time with it. But yeah, it's four for me, and I will definitely be watching it again. I mean, if you have AMC A list, like oh, high roller over so here with his AMC membership. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Alec, do you really not have one yet? No, I go to Fat Cats or Harkins. Mm. Dude, save yourself some money, man. Whew. Bro, I just like to go see movies. 
besides AMC is like super far away and nobody has time to drive to there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see that. There you go. Like a whole five minutes. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I am a snob when it comes to how far I have to drive. That's funny. Not all of us have to pay nineteen dollars a movie either. Though, right? Yeah, crazy. mine's like eleven fifty. What the fuck are you paying? <laughs> God, you guys have expensive movies. Mine's like eight bucks if I didn't have my, but I have my AMC pass because I'm cheap. Yeah, I wouldn't and I be able to do this way podcast more than three AMC. movies. Yeah, like I go to way more movies than three a week. So because I can with AMC. Anyway, neither here nor there. I like this movie. I had fun. I surprised that I'm going to score at the lowest. Like I was like. I had fun, but to me, it was still an animated film. And it was like kind of what Matson was pointing out, like with the Toy Story thing. Like I think about animated films when I was younger and those are the ones that I really compare everything to. And so these just aren't quite as entertaining to me, but I did like it. I'm going to give it a three and a half. I felt like there was some weird, even for a kid's movie, some weird things that weren't explained very well. And so I was confused at part of it. And that's my adult brain overthinking things but i did have a lot of fun with the movie um so i do recommend it go see it it's just because this movie didn't have sockets and whatever the else you know, that robots are going to the bathroom and a guy like that shit was funny as fuck get- <laughs> but i was an adult <laughs> when that movie? one came out too so <laughs> what's that movie again robots. what's that one called robots, robots. you gotta go back I need to go to watch like that scene brave little toaster for when jj was a kid wow you're a dick <laughs> <laughs> but you're not exactly wrong <laughs> well, it's, it's funny because like you guys talk about toy story and i'm like oh yeah you were kids when that came out because i love toy story i was at very least about to graduate from high school when toy story came out i may have already i was two no oh my god <laughs> Yeah, 1995 was when Toy Story came out. That's four. Fuck you both. (laughs) I was 15. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, I was halfway to being an adult when that movie came out. Yeah, so when I say movies, like, I'm talking, like, Lion King and Aladdin. Like, those are the ones that I was a kid when they came out. So, yeah, it just doesn't, to me, like the modern day animated movies don't compare to those movies very well. So yeah. Anyway, three and a half for me, fun movie. I'll watch it again, especially with my, my nieces and nephew. I definitely sit down and watch it with them. So there it is. Matson, tell them where they can find us. Well, you can find us at what's to kind of see what is upcoming. Um, you can click on that tab. We're really excited for some of the bigger blockbuster movies to come out like Dr. Strange, Jurassic Park, Top Gun, to name a few off the top of my head. Also excited for a lot of the TV, probably even more so like Obi-Wan, Stranger Things, different TV shows like that. So if you want to find us on uh, wherever good podcasts can be found and you want to look up our movie reviews, search uh, What's Our Verdict. If you're looking for some of those uh, TV shows that I've mentioned, search What's Our Verdict TV. And then if you're looking for our spoiler freeze for any of the, the newer big movies that are coming out, check our YouTube channel out at What's Our Verdict. Definitely. And speaking of what's coming up next week, we will be reviewing Doctor Strange. So tune in What's for up? that one. You can already see our spoiler free on YouTube for that already. So go check that out. But uh, the deep dive will be on the 16th of May. So come listen to that when it comes time. Yeah. Lots of stuff coming with TV. Can't wait for mm, Obi-Wan as mentioned. Yes. All right. So there it is. As always, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Cinematic out.